Yes, you can measure software developer productivity. Uh, also, apparently this company uh, is quite in trouble. They're, they're known for some pretty shady business practices. Is it shocking that they're also attempting to measure uh, this. So let's find out. Okay, we're going to take a little we're going to take a little looksy loo into the future and see can we actually measure software developer productivity. All right. Measure tracking and benchmarking developer productivity has long been uh, considered a black box. It doesn't have to be that way. Man, I don't want to work at this place. Let's find out what they do to make this place a horrible place to work at. Compared with other critical business functions such as sales or customer operations, software development is perennially undermeasured. The long-held belief by many in tech is that it's not possible to do it correctly, and that, in any case, only trained engineers any knowledgeable enough to assess the performance of their peers. Okay. Okay, so that's me. Let's let's prove. You know what I mean? Let's let's find out. I don't know. I don't believe it. Yes, that status quo is no longer sustainable. Really? Uh, now that most companies are becoming to one degree or another software companies, regardless of industry, leaders need to know they are de uh, deploying their most valuable uh, talent as successfully as possible. All right. This is going to be fun, people. I can, I can feel myself so willing to disagree that it's just shocking. It's absolutely shocking how much I feel like I can disagree with this statement. Uh, anyways, let's keep on going. There is no denying that measuring developer productivity is difficult. Other functions can be measured reasonably well, some even with just a single metric. Where, let's see, whereas in software development, the link between inputs and output is considerably less clear. Software development is also highly collaborative, complex, and creative work that requires different metrics for different levels, such as systems, teams, and individuals. What's more, and also software choices, legacy, uh, uh, type of features you're developing. Like, there's a whole slew of things that you may not even be able to get who you're hiring and what are they good at versus anything else i don't know i don't know feels 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 fake okay what's more even if there is genuine commitment to track productivity properly traditional metrics can require systems and software that are set up to allow more nuanced and comprehensive measurement for some standard metrics entire tech stacks and development pipelines need to be reconfigured to enable tracking and putting in place the necessary instruments and tools to yield meaningful insights can require significant long-term investment what i'm hearing at least is all you need to do is just hire like 10 engineers to set up everything to measure all the engineers to prove you are deploying your engineering stuff correctly is that what i'm hearing does that mean you have to hire engineers to hire engineers to hire engine like how many how many turtles do we get before we're all the way there let's find out uh, let's see furthermore the landscape of software development is changing quickly as generative ai tools such as copilot x and chat gpt have potential to enable developers to complete tasks up to two times faster yeah this this thing i think it's from github oh this is another one of them this is just like such a bullshit metric it it only works in software in which you're a consultant and you want and you want to simply produce it as fast as possible and you give literally two f about its maintainability and you just want to get that shit done right like any person that i know that uses copilot to complete logic is absolutely and outstanding nuts right i don't know why you would ever do that it completely breaks your flow state it completely breaks everything i love copilot for for like uh logical boilerplate right when i'm like struct video has timestamp has this has this has this struct audio frame has this 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 good job copilot you do right like i like that that makes sense but anything beyond that you are being crazy to help overcome these challenges and make this critical task by the way it is a w take i think personally um i don't think generative ai is there uh i really don't think it is there i like copilot i use it all the time for for any sort of boilerplate uh completion is it faster than just using your lsp i would say it's a minor bit faster just like a hint faster but if you have good, strong LSP understanding and completion set up, I think that the LSP can almost be as good. And if you're using languages like Go, Go already does most of what Copilot effectively does for me, right? Go's LSP is like top of the market. Um, anyways, to help overcome these challenges and make this critical task more feasible, we developed an approach to measuring software development. Okay, this is like the longest foreplay I've ever read. Just give me the meat and give it to me raw, Okay. A new approach has been implemented at nearly te 20 tech, finance, and pharmaceuticals companies, and the initial results are promising. They include the following improvements. 20 to 30% reduction in customer-reported product defects. Okay. I mean, that's good. 
20% improvement in employee experience scores. I'm not sure what that means, but okay. 60% point improvement in customer satisfaction ratings. Okay, okay, let's find out. It's a consulting company, what do you expect? I know. So this all sounds like, honestly, when I hear this, there's an old phrase that we all like to say, right? Which is there's lies, there's damned lies, and then there's statistics. And so I feel like we might be beyond damn lies. I know, made up metrics, right? You can make up these things so easily. You can drop certain things. You can take out outliers, right? Like people do this crap all the time. When they tell you a statistic, you don't know how many outliers have been removed. Oh, uh, yeah, if you just remove the outliers and, and normal, you normalize the data, you know, you normalize it. Is this a normal distribution? Is it some sort of alpha beta distribution that's happening right now? Right, because here's the problem. Let's just say you have a you have an alpha beta distribution. For those that don't know, an alpha beta distribution looks something like it's like the internet, right? A lot of internet packets fall into here, and then there's just like this giant tail of just slow ass data. And so, all you have to do to get a 20% improvement is you just have one person that improves like 90% out of 20 companies, and then you have a bunch of people that have improvements of like two to four percent. And you're just like, statistics, tell me what the median is, okay? What the median, I don't care about your averages, nobody cares. Uh, leveraging productivity insights. With the access to richer productivity data and insights, leaders can begin to answer pressing questions about the software engineering talent they fought so hard to attract and retain, such as the following. What are the impediments to engineers working uh, at their best level? React. How much does culture and organization affect their ability to produce uh, their best work? So we're going to micromanage all their tasks to find out how effective they are so that we know how does culture and organization affect their ability to do tasks? How do we know if they're using their time on activities that truly drive value? If you look at Facebook or Twitter or threads or Reddit, you're not driving value. You're an asshole. Uh, how can we know if uh, we have all the software engineer talent we need? Well, that's kind of like an impossible question, right? All right, understanding the foundation. Can you just tell me what it is? Stop with the foreplay. Let's get to it. To use uh, a sufficiently nuanced system, if I hear how complex the system is one more damn time without telling me what it is, I'm going to lose my shit, okay? Of measuring developer productivity, it's essential to understand the three types of metrics that need to be tracked. Those at the system level, the team level, and the individual level. Didn't you literally just say it right up here in the parenthetical group? Where is the parenthetical group? Systems, teams, individuals. Look at that, okay? We got it. We understand. We understand you got metrics at different levels. Just give us the meat, people. Unlike a function such as a sales, uh, where a system level metric of dollar earned or deals closed could be used to measure the work of both teams and individuals, software development is collaborative in a distinctive way that requires different lenses. For instance, while deployment frequency is a perfectly good uh, metric to assess systems or teams, it depends on all team members doing their respective tasks and is therefore not a useful way to track individual performance. It also is completely the dumbest metric I have ever heard in my lifetime. If you think deployment frequency is a good metric, well, guess what? You could deploy every single commit that passes some big old CI, CD pipeline, and it doesn't matter. Now you have infinity commits. But what you're doing to your production system, what are you doing? You're cash busting every single time, thus lowering your time to first whatever render. G gosh, it's like, why would you do this? Why would you do this? Why? Update the readme. Like, this is just, oh my goodness, it's so frustrating. Another critical dimension to recognize is what the various metrics do and do not tell you. If you, gosh, for example, measuring deployment frequency or lead time for changes can give you a clear view of certain outcomes, but not of whether the engineering organization is optimized. And while metrics such as story points completed or interruptions, I have not put down story points in 10 years. Uh, or interruptions can help determine opt, uh, determine optimization. They require more investigation to identify improvements that might be beneficial. Okay, all of that didn't mean anything to me. In building our set of metrics, we looked to expand on two sets of metrics already developed by the software industry. The first is the Dora, Dora the Explorer metrics named for Google's DevOps research and assessment team. I don't even know what this is. These are the, what are they? These are the closest a tech sector has to a standard, and they are great for measuring outcomes. When a Dora metric returns a subpar outcome, it is a signal to investigate what has gone wrong, which can often involve a protracting 
protracted sleuthing. They just make up something by putting two words together. Uh, for example, if such a metric as deploy frequency increases or decreases, there can be multiple causes. Thank you. You could have just said that to begin with. This whole paragraph could have been that. Determining what they are and how to resolve them is often not straightforward. If you... Who suggested this article? Who suggest who's gonna get banned today? Who's getting banned? Okay, we got another we got another one. What is this? The government? We have Dora Space metrics. Uh, the second set of industry developed measurements is space metrics. Satisfaction and well-being, performance activity, communication, and collaboration. How does that spell space and efficiency and workflow? What? How does that spell space? I'm super confused. Satisfaction and well-being. Performance. Activity, communication and collaboration, and efficiency and flow. That is the greatest abuse I've ever seen in my lifetime. That's the greatest abuse ever for creating an acronym. Greatest ever. Uh, which GitHub and Microsoft Research Development to augment DORA metrics by adopting an individual lens, particular around developer well-being, space metrics, are great at clarifying whether an engineer organization is optimized. For example... Uh, and increase inter interruptions that developers experience indicate a need for optimization. On top of these already powerful metrics, our approach seeks to identify... Okay, just get, give me the meat. Okay, here we go. Dora metrics, this one. Space metrics, that one. Opportunity fo fo focus metrics. Deployment frequency, stupid. Customer satisfaction, reliability, uptime. Okay, I mean, again, customer satisfaction... It, like, I just want you to think about this for a second. Okay, I want you to think about this for a second. Okay, there exists this, there exists, there exists a curve, like the IQ bell curve, okay? There's really smart guy over here, right? We all know about really smart guy in a hood, right? Then we got, you know, the the midwit, right? We got the midwit. And then we got like the, the, the five head space station guy, right? Okay, each of them not looking too good. No, Tom is actually the 0.1% cube brain. Then there's Tom, right? Right, and his brain's just huge, right? He's like, he's really far out there, okay? Uh, he's way far out there. He's he's uh, he's the next level. He's the 0.01%. And at Netflix, we've developed, I work at Netflix, by the way, just in case you're wondering, uh, we've developed many of things that make people watch more Netflix and enjoy more shows and thus give us higher favorability ratings. Now, here's the problem. We've developed things that also make people really upset and don't like it. And so that's a whole product manager thing going on here. And so if you are just simply, you know, here's the deal is that you're targeting this group. You're saying, what do the midwits love? Cause that's most people. Most people are midwits. Okay. Now these people are like, I hate automatic playing shows. I hate automatic playing shows, but these people are like, ah, oh, that's what I want to watch. Right. And so we develop these features where everyone on Twitter, which is pretty much these people are like, I hate this. And everybody right here loves it. And everybody that's on Reddit, which thinks they're smart, they might fall into this or they don't. Well, actually, uh, they're over there like, I hate it. So this is what happens. And so when you're like, hey, customer satisfaction, how can you measure that, right? It's, it's, it's not just engineers. It's also product managers. It's also what you're building. It's also your market. You're trying to like, you know, like think about VRBO versus Airbnb. VRBO was the thing. Everyone liked it. VRBO. It sucks. It's not a great piece of software. They were satisfied, and then Airbnb came along and made better software, and now people are unsatisfied with VRBO, right? Were, are you having... Did you change something? No, the market changed underneath you. Anyways, it's just stupid. The whole thing's stupid. Uh, these opportunity-focused productivity metrics use a few different lenses to generate a nuanced view of complex range of activities involved with software product development. Inner, outer loop... Uh, time spent. To identify specific areas for improvement, it's helpful to think of the activities involved in software development as being arranged in two loops. Uh, an inner loop comprised of activities directly related to creating the product, coding, building, and unit testing. Uh, and outer loop comprised of tasks developers must do to push their code to production, integration, integration testing, releasing, and deployment. Uh, from both a productivity and personal experience standpoint, maximizing the amount of time developers spend in the inner loop is desirable. Products. Uh, so again, this is just like building out a nice streamlined place. I like. I don't think there's anything. Oh. <laughs> nice loop, dog. Um. Nice loop. 
Anyways, uh, cool. That was cool. I'm not even going to continue to read this at this point. Uh, it seems like mostly crap. My general rule of thumb is that how do you know an organization is healthy? You make time and you hire talent to take care of the quote-unquote outer loop, right? I measure things not by individuals, but mostly by or organization health, right? So this outer loop, deployment, CI, testing, infrastructure, all that stuff. How important does your company take that? Do they hire the right people? Does every single engineer have to think about that? Do they have to take their time and understand what's happening? How fast can they put up new CI, CD? How fast can they do all these things? How good is your production measurement? Like how much time and stuff have you set up to be able to understand when production fails, when a, when a, when a commit's bad, all that kind of stuff. Like if you don't have a really great thing right here, it kind of seems like the rest of the metrics are stupid and every way you're trying to measure people and all that is just dumb. To me, the sign of a good working place is how good is this box? Because the next box that's inside of it will be able to move fast based on a couple decisions. Technology you pre previously chosen to base your entire life on and B, uh, and B, how good this outer box is. And so it's like, yeah, you chose Angular 1.6 and the whole place moved on from you. And now you can only hire Angular 1.6 people, which you have no idea what their kind of level of proficiency is. And so you kind of made a bad decision. Now you either have to stop, you have to burn the ship down or you have to, or you have to just deal with what you've created. But you can still have a really great experience here where you're releasing and doing all the right things right here. So it's like, there's no way. I, I just think that anyone who attempts to measure software as like some sort of scientific way is just doing the wrong thing. I think their intentions are bad. I know that's a pretty bold statement to say their intentions are bad. Either their, their intentions are naive or their intentions are bad. Because at this point, it's been tried 100 times. And if you think for whatever reason that you can do it, I think you're wrong. I think you're just simply wrong. They're measuring the wrong thing. Of course they're measuring the wrong thing, right? It's really hard to blame one individual unless if that one individual is always at the center of everything going wrong. Then you can start to blame an individual, right? That can happen. But I think it takes time to kind of get, like you really have to measure over a long period of time. And you usually, usually before any of those things happen, all the coworkers are like, hey, this guy, he ain't cutting it. This has been, this has been awful, you know? And then usually you know that quite, you know that, way earlier you know what i mean you know that way 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 earlier anyways just some thoughts i have what can you do uh, i would suggest not measuring uh productivity in that kind of sense i think that your coworkers and everyone around you can kind of sense the productivity of the team and you can sense what is going wrong and long as you do those things i think that you'll get a lot more out of this than some nonsense whatever blah 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 the name I don't have a good one, so the primogen.